Settings, commands, and custom HUDs are never going to turn a subpar player into a hard carry, but they can make the game more enjoyable and give you an ever so slight edge. This video will be broken into two main parts. First, a few settings beneficial to every class, then we'll talk about more medic specific options. Right off the bat, make sure raw input is selected for your mouse to start building that sweet, sweet muscle memory. <gasps> I'll kill you! Oh, the curse killed me! A vaccinator? You got vaccinated. I'm not cheating, chat. I'm not cheating. I swear to God. And make sure to test out different sensitivities until you find one that just hits for you. I personally use a sensitivity of 1.7 in game with 800 DPI on my mouse, which gives me about a six inch 180. Generally speaking, a higher sensitivity will help with movement and awareness because you can whip around the camera much faster. Lower sensitivity gives you more control over fine movements and helps with overall accuracy. For me, I find the perfect balance when I'm doing most of my big movements with my arm, then using my wrist to do fine corrections. However, Medic does benefit from twitchier and quicker movements than some other classes, which is something to consider if you don't play other rolls that often. Next, make sure your field of view is set to 90 by bumping it up in the settings or using the command FOV desired 90 in the console. I hope it will be quite apparent to you that having a higher field of view on the class that often depends on awareness and tracking enemies is pretty essential. Alongside your character's FOV, you can also change your view model field of view using the view model FOV command. Setting this up to 90 will make your view models a bit smaller, but I personally use 70 because I just like the way it looks. I also endorse using the minimal view model setting regardless regardless of your weapons field of view. Weapons are just too damn big and take up too much valuable screen real estate without minimum view models enabled. Enable them with this command or, you know, just, wow. Finally, just ax motion blur altogether. It turns the game into a smeary mess and makes it hard to distinguish details when flicking around. Seriously, look how bad this looks in comparison. Let's move on to all of the important options found in the advanced settings tab. If you have an already enabled fast weapon switch, you should probably get your brain checked, but also make sure hit and kill sounds are turned on. A good hit sound is especially nice for when you land a crossbow shot on a disguised spy. It will instantly give them away. Now jumping into some medic specific settings. Turn on all three of these in the advanced options. Having beam stay on your patient without having to hold down left click is nice quality of life and can save some fingers. The little marker that the second setting puts over your teammate's head isn't all too impactful, but it can make it a little bit easier to see exactly who your beam is attached to in a crowd. The medic auto call setting is where this video gets interesting. If you haven't noticed already, I have mine set to 99%. Basically, anytime any of my teammates takes damage, they auto call out for medic. This might sound dumb at first. If my entire team is calling for medic, how do I know who is really damaged and who just got chipped? by a single straight pistol shot. Well, let me explain. The medic auto call symbol looks distinctly different from the manual medic call. So if a player is really hurt and is actually calling for medic themselves, you'll be able to tell. The reason to set auto call to such an absurdly high number is because the symbol it produces allows you to track teammates through walls. I trust myself to be able to properly track the damage my players have been taking and prioritize heals accordingly. So the pseudo wall hacks provided by setting this to 99% are far more valuable. Basically, it provides you with wall hacks, ladies ladies and gentlemen, need I say more? But I will say more, because if wall hacks were all I was looking for, I could just use a medic radar script. A script such as this one sets the auto call to 300% health, then back down to your desired value, instantly triggering an auto call for all teammates in your vicinity. If you often find yourself wondering where the hell is my team, then this is the script for you. As with most of the commands and add-ons in this video, I'll include it in the description, right below that like button. So if I can get these wall hacks whenever I want by pressing a single button, what does setting the default auto call to 99% do for me? Me. Wouldn't it be better to set it to something more sensible, like 80% or 65%, so when I'm not using the radar button, I get a better sense of who's really chunked and who just took some chip damage? That makes sense, and it's a completely valid option, but setting the percent to 99 gives one additional benefit. Disguised spies will auto-call out for medic based on their current health, not the health of the player they're disguised as. So setting the auto-call so high can let you identify spies instantly in certain circumstances. As seen here, if a spy is damaged at all, but disguised as a full health teammate, they will auto call. So if you see a teammate at full health with this little symbol above his head, chances are he's a spy. This setting is invaluable whenever you aren't using the Crusaders because you can just spam some syringes at a potential spy to effortlessly spy check them. I personally set my auto call to 99% relatively recently, so I haven't honed my ability and playstyle to use it to its fullest potential quite yet, but let me tell you, it has already saved me from spies many times. Sometimes it legit feels like cheating. I mean, Look at this clip. I was just walking out of spawn when I noticed this little icon appear in front of me. Wait a minute. 
I just spawned in with my usual respawn wall hacks and there was no teammate over there. Plus, a previously damaged teammate would have already triggered the call out as I came out of spawn. It wouldn't have just shown up unless he just took the damage right now. But a teammate wouldn't be fighting an enemy over there just outside our spawn. We've already pushed out to the first point. So it could have been a soldier or a demo blast jumping to roll out, but then the HUD icon would have followed them as they flew away. Putting two and two together, I look over to check it out and what do you know? I literally got a HUD notification telling me a spy was off to my right. This setting is broken. While we're here in the advanced options, turn on colorblind mode as well. It adds these nice little symbols for status effects such as Jurati or Mad Milk above people's heads. If you didn't know, the metagun can reduce the duration of some of these effects on your teammates, so it doesn't hurt to make them a little bit clearer. I actually recommend not disabling the floating health bars, so leaving them floating. While disabling them does make it so your teammates' health value is always in the exact same position on your screen, I find that in a crowd, it also makes it harder to track which teammate you are really seeing the health for. Having the health stay right above their head as they move Move makes it very apparent that this player is who you're looking at. And in the end, I don't think the inconsistency of health location matters too much. Most of the time, I decide who to heal off the health bar color and the proportion that is filled up rather than reading the exact numerical value. I mean, I don't need to read the number to know that this player is fine and this player needs some feed. Let's talk about HUDs. A lot of what makes a quote unquote good HUD comes down to personal preference. But if you did want to rate a HUD based on a metric of how objectively good it really is, I think it only needs to be unobtrusive and easily readable. I'm a fan of Toon HUD for how it shows you how many vaccinator charges you currently have as a number rather than just displaying a percentage. But whatever HUD you decide to use, do not get rid of the match HUD at the top of your screen. Knowing who's alive and who's dead is a very crucial aspect of playing medic. If most of your team is down for the count, you should back up and stay away from the front lines and vice versa. If your squad just got a few key picks, it's time to get involved. The match HUD can also help you check if a spy used the dead ringer or not. If you see a spy die, but no spy shows up dead up there, he's still alive. If you haven't noticed already, like half the settings and mechanics in this game just destroy spy as a class. Regardless of what HUD you use, here's a pro tip for all you solemn vow enjoyers. In this target ID file for Toon HUD, you can change the size or font of the teammate's ammo number that appears on your HUD, and by extension, the size of enemy medic's uber charge percent when you look at them with the Solemn Vow equipped. I think the file name and location may be different for other HUDs, so I'm afraid I can't be of much help if you aren't using Toon HUD like I can, but here's where it is for me. Just edit these lines labeled target data label to another font such as this and bada bing. Enemy Uber charge percents are way easier to see. I recommend binding some easily reachable keys on your keyboard to your different medic loadouts. I have my loadout set up for each metagun, just making it more convenient to switch to whatever I feel like playing that round. Hitting this resupply bind and spawn for your current loadout will instantly restore your health and ammo and even teleport you to a new forward spawn if your team just capped, all without resetting your current uber charge percent. A lot of the settings covered in this video are based on personal preference, so don't take my word as gospel or think that this is the best way to play TF2. This is just what's worked for me. You should go out and experiment with various settings and HUDs until you find what best fits your own priorities and play styles. And it shouldn't need to be said, but none of these settings are ever going to magically make you a good player either. But they can give you some minute advantages. This is the perfect life form. He finally goes down. <laughs> Jesus.